Um, how how close to the wind are we sailing, do you think, Mark, when it comes to losing our AAA credit rating? Uh, good morning, James. I think that, that's exactly right in terms of your assessment. I think S&P was, you know, still very pessimistic in terms of the outlook and the forecasts. And, you know, they've got uh, Australia's AAA rating on that negative outlook, which if you uh, kind of go through the, the averages means there's a one in three chance that it does get downgraded over the next two years. And if you think about it, it, it was uh, put on negative watch back in July mm. uh, this year. Uh, in terms of sailing to the wind, you know, I think, you know, they, they keep warning uh, you know, the Australian government, they need to get the, uh, the budget back in under control and we need to start generating surpluses and this keeps getting pushed further and further into the future. But I think if you compare, you know, the Australian situation, you know, in terms of debt to GDP, it's still very low compared to some other AAA uh, rated countries. And part of the reason is that, you know, Australia does have uh, a larger offshore funding requirement for both uh, uh, its banks and probably some of the government debt as well is held by a larger percentage of offshore investors and that's, that will obviously play into the, the, the credit ratings as well from the from the agencies. So in terms of you know, holding that AAA, you know, it's still stable with Moody's and Fitch uh, in terms of the outlook and that uh, negative outlook with S&P. And in terms of the impact though, if it does go to AA+, you know, I think it's probably marginal at best uh, to, to very little impact. You'll see you know, obviously a knock-on impact for some of the uh, domestic major banks that they will be downgraded, downgraded as will some of the states as well. Um, but again, you know, in terms of their funding costs, it's, it's going to be very difficult to ascertain what additional f funding uh, uh, margin will actually be charged by investors. You know, it's all in the big mix. Mm -hmm. And then in any case as well, you've seen wholesale funding cost increase because you've seen the yield curves increase as well in the, la in the last uh, couple of months anyway. So you've seen banks trying to maintain their net interest margins, their, their profitability by increasing uh, mortgage rates uh, across the board, you know, fixed rates, uh, floatings, uh, and also some of the regional banks have followed line in line as well. So it's interesting that your lead-in story, you know, talking about Westpac and Bill Evans and the fact that uh, interest rates uh, cuts are, are less likely. You know, the RBA has always said that it will look through to the final cost of capital to the, the any business or consumer. And if mortgage rates are, are increasing and if Australia does get downgraded and costs of funding for banks does increase and they pass those on, then the RBA will consider that in terms of where the, its needle is on its dial and it's probably more likely to, to cut rates uh, on the back of uh, increased uh, cost of capital to Australian businesses and consumers. And how likely do you think that is to actually happening because yeah, a lot of the fear around the, the cut as you as you quite eloquently sort of put out is that it could impact mortgage holders because the banks would look to pass on any impact to their funding costs through to customers and if you're seeing um, rates going higher that's being offered by the banks then the RBA cuts I mean it does do the do the chips fall like that do you think next year I do. I mean, I think there's going to be at least another cut next year um, in, 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 my, uh, in my estimates. Um, you know, I think that the Australian economy is still fairly, fairly weak. And if the RBA judges that, um, you know, the cost of capital to, to businesses and on mortgages has increased, then it will look to, to lower that to try and stimulate the economy. And yes, there's an argument that, you know, that, that with rates where they are at the moment, another 25 basis point cut will do very little. And that's partly true, but, you know, the RBA only has really one lever to pull and it will pull that, you know, and try and provide a stimulus, monetary stimulus to the economy to try to get it on track to where it believes that growth and potentially uh, employment should be going forward. So, you know, I think, you know, in terms of the, the economic data that we're seeing, it's, it's still pretty soft within Australia. And I still think um, there's a potential another cut. And, you know, and that is kind of, again, supported by the fact if you lose a AAA rate and you get the knock-on impact to maybe higher mortgage rates from banks because they're passing on that to higher cost of wholesale funding. It's interesting because, I mean, we're seeing...